What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Life Coach Zach podcast. Today, I have a very special guest with me, Kathleen Trotter, speaker and health expert, master in science. She's going to help us, teach us, and show us the way to create systems that'll help you in your health and wellness journey. And as a special giveaway to all the viewers out there, Kathleen is going to be giving away a book to the first person who reshares the Instagram post about this podcast episode, shoot her a DM, blow her up on social media. Let's get to the podcast. Kathleen, first of all, I'm super excited to do this podcast today. Yeah. Because we have a lot in common. I do think we really do have a lot in common. We have a lot in common and I can't wait for you to just spread your wisdom and knowledge to my audience. Uh, Perfect. So tell us actually a little bit about yourself and how you started your health journey and where you are today. Okay. Oh, (laughs) cat is moving around my computer. Um, Okay. So where did I start my health journey? I think the first and foremost thing I always start is with, I wasn't born fit or having a natural sort of desire to be active. Um, And for the first half of my life, I really, really didn't like being Kathleen. I was awkward in my body. My mom was a single mom. We moved around a lot. I was kind of more nerdy than physically active. I would sneak food. I would lie to get out of gym class. Um, And I only really say that as a background because I think it's important for people listening because a lot of times you see somebody who's healthy and fit and, you know, they make their living as a trainer and you're like, oh, well, they're, you're, they're naturally like this. You know, they were born fit um, and it's easy for them and it's hard for me and I'll never be fit and they will always be fit. And it's just this like way that we self stop and believe me I used to do that for the first half of my life I would look at people in magazines or I'd look at athletes or I'd look at my friends who were more active and I would be like oh well it's normal for them it's natural it's just not who I am Um, and I love Aristotle's sort of idea of you become a builder by building things you become a harpist by being like by heart like playing the harp and I really feel like I've become somebody who is active and healthy just by doing the things that makes you more active and healthy Um, another like I love James Clear his book Atomic Habits he talks about like every choice you make is a vote for the person you want to become right um, so yeah, so I would just say like, I really slowly evolved into sure. the person I am today. Right. right. Um, and in my twenties, as we were talking about before we started recording, like I did Ironmans, I did marathons, I did half Ironmans. I don't do that anymore just cause I kind of prioritize other things. And I, um, but, but yeah, so I started, um, about, I don't know when I was like 17 or 18, my mom just sort of said to me, like, listen, we got to get you being more active. And obviously the ways that I've tried to make you active in the past haven't worked. Like we sort of tried to put a square peg into a round hole. Like we did all the things that kids did. You know, she put me in ballet. We did softball. We tried, well, hockey because my dad played hockey, gym class, like all that stuff. And I hated all of it. Um, and she just sort of said, well, I think partly why you hated it is it was with people your own age. And I think you just feel insecure and uncomfortable with people your age, but you like people who are older, like you just don't feel as insecure. So she's like, we're going to get you a membership to the YMCA and you're going to start 10 minutes walking on the treadmill because the demographic is like over, you know, over 40 and under five. And so I started and it was just really like my mom and she was the one who really helped me create my philosophy of finding your fit. Like that's my first book, finding your fit. And Mm -hmm. it's about you know, meet yourself where you are and take a small step forward. Cause that's not the last step you'll ever take. But if you don't take your first step, you can't take your second and your third and your fourth. Right. Um, and you know, it was a slow evolution from there. Walking on the treadmill turned into more walking, which turned into weights, which ta- turned into taking aerobics classes, mm-hmm. which turned into teaching aerobics classes, which turned into becoming a personal trainer, which turned into becoming a coach, which turned into taking my master's, you know, and it just sort of this like, like lovely snowball or an upward spiral. Right. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't know. Does that, any of that sort of land with you? 100% lands with me. I, uh, you, you mentioned Aristotle and I forgot what the quote is, but it's something about like excellence is a choice, right? You choose to yes. be excellent each day. Therefore excellence is a choice. And also, you know, those small wins that you took each and every single day, oh consistently. Yes. Ex- yes it's time, consistently. Yes. Yeah. Results. I learned that from the, yeah, compound. it's the, it's really about just being a little bit better every single day, right. And building that yeah. consistency and strengthening that willpower and strengthening your self-discipline, but and also- strengthening the habit, like just making it more naturally part of what you do and who you are. Right. Right. And also the James, the James clear quote, right? Like each step you take, each decision, choice, action you take is a check mark to the new identity that you're stepping into. It's yeah, not what yeah. you want to and I like who you want to become. James Clear wanted become, to become yeah. a writer, 
right? So in order to become a writer, he had to write a lot. He wrote blog yeah. posts every single week. And each wow. single week, he was getting more and more viewers. And now he's written potentially, unarguably, I think, actually, the best book ever written about habits. I've read it three, four times, probably. It's amazing. Twice, yeah. twice. Well, and paper, what I like twice about Audible, him. amazing book. Yeah. What I like is that he really stresses that in order to vote yourself into this new person, you don't have to vote yourself in 100%. Like, it's not about perfection, right? He says, like, if you're voting a, a politician in, you know, 51%, right? So if you do 75% or 80% or like as long as it's every day consistent, that's the consistency is what matters. Um, and getting through what he would call that sort of plateau of latent behavior, right? So he talks about watching an ice cube melt and he says, you're putting the effort in and the ice cube is melting, but you don't see it melt until all of a sudden it's like, oh, it's melting. It's starting to turn into water. And that's what people miss. Like when I was going and walking on the treadmill, so many people would be like, oh, that's not enough. They would shit all over themselves. Well, I should be doing more. And then by then they would do nothing because they're like, well, I'm not perfect. So I'm going to do nothing. But you have to put in the steps at the beginning that don't seem mm -hmm. like that much. But it's that little bit of work at the beginning where the ice cube is starting to melt. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I feel better. I have more energy. I'm sleeping better. I can walk longer. Um, but just really like getting rid of perfection and that goal and just say, like, what can you do today? Like, what small things Love can it. you do to vote your future self? Love this. In? Progress over perfection. At 32 yes. degrees, it's an ice cube. At 31 yes. degrees, it starts melting into water, yes. right? He also yes, says, but if you don't let it get from 32 right, to 31, right. like you will never see the melt. He also mentioned how, uh, you know, if you gave someone $1, they would still be poor. They have $1. Give them another dollar and another, eventually they have $100. Eventually they have $10,000. Yeah. Eventually they have $100,000. Maybe they're not rich yeah. yet, but there will come a yeah. point where that $1 yeah. puts them from either yeah. medium income yeah. or poor to rich, totally. right? So well, it's that final coin that makes you a millionaire, yes. but it doesn't exactly. make you a millionaire if you didn't have all the coins that came before. Right. I don't know. I, so I'm a big believer in therapy. I've been in therapy for 20 years. And that's what my therapist always says. Like when I start a session, I'm like all in my head. I'm like, ah, and she just says, Kathleen, one step. What is the one step you can take? Like, you don't need to know all the answers, but you need to take one step or one thing, even if it's just a meditative breath, because if you are not in the physiological state where you can make an informed decision, then you're never going to take like the 10th and the 11th and the 12th step. Like you just got to get going. Yeah. Um, and that always really calms me down because I think we can get into this analysis paralysis yes. with life and, but also with fitness, it's like, oh, well, if I don't have the perfect program and I don't know exactly what I'm going to do and what am I going to eat next Sunday? And what about two months from now? What am I, it's like, okay, calm down. What can you do now? Okay, you're listening to a health podcast. That's great. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can go for a walk as I listen, or I can have some water as I listen, you know? Like, it's just, it's it's this wonderful paradox of like, you kind of always have to be working, but you also never have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. um, and it's sort of this, this like, day, it's what you said, it's the daily compound effect of consistent um, motion. Yep. But it's actually, it's both like simultaneously easier and harder than we think yeah. it is. Like we, we make it more complex. Well, we think too much. You're right. Like we, we, we think, think too much. much. Yeah. It's paralysis by analysis. We yes. look yeah. up the best plan and we look the best diet and we spend yeah. 150 bucks at Publix or the grocery store. Yeah, totally. It's like, no, 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 no. What no, can no. you yeah. do right here, right now, right with now. what you got yeah. from where you're at yeah. each and every single day. Absolutely. And then just yeah. be consistent. I, you know, I tell, I, yeah. Recently, I mean, this year, um, my life coaching business has just taken off, not just uh, business wise and fiscally, but the impact that I'm making on my clients has been tremendous. And so oh, many, so, recent, cool. so many recent, like massive success stories. Uh, a client I've been working with now for barely over a month was not exercising at all. And he's like, Zach, I need to start exercising. I'm 45 years old. I haven't exercised in 15 years. It's now or never. Da, 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 da. I said, okay, great. What's the lowest hanging fruit that you can take off the yeah. tree? Right? It's, yeah. hey, you just got to exercise today. You know, 20 yeah. minutes, totally. 20 minutes of getting your heart rate up. Yeah. You can walk yeah, around, you can sure. hit the Peloton, yeah. you can do push ups, you can do jumping jacks, you can run up to the dance. If you're like, dance, put on music and, and dance Anything. around. Go, go to the park with your kids or your grandkids or join us like with your friends. Like, go, you know, throw the right. baseball around. Like, make it fun too, right? Like, it doesn't have to be this crazy thing that makes you want to cry. You know, eventually you can do an Iron Man if you want to, and that can make you cry. But right now, maybe find something that you actually enjoy so that you're more likely to be like, oh, I could do that tomorrow as mm -hmm. well. 
right? So let me ask you this, actually. Um, I got a good question for you. So obviously, okay, all this like knowledge that we're sharing, yes. right? All this good energy yeah. and all this wisdom that we learned from James Clear and all these other mentors, whether it's diet. But how do we, how do I phrase the question? How do we make sure that we actually execute on the plan? Knowledge is useless yes. unless we apply it. So based on totally. your experience, what is the mm -hmm. best way for you to make sure that you actually are doing these things? Doing it. Oh yeah. Connecting the dots between wanting and doing. That's the hard part, right? I love that Derek Sivers quote. He's like, if knowledge was enough, we'd all be billionaires with six pack abs, right? Like we all know, but you know, drink more water, move more, sleep better. Like we know it, but do we do it? No, it, cause it's hard. Like you sit down at a lunch and you're like, oh my God, what's the perfect diet. And then you're like, well, screw it. I don't know what the perfect diet is. I'll just have a hamburger and fries. And it's like, I often I tell, tell my clients, it's like sometimes you, do, you often don't know what the best choice is, but you really know what the worst choice is. So do not make that really terrible mm -hmm. choice. Um, but anyway, so the answer to your questions is systems, yes. systems, systems. So systems are things that tie up your future self. They are sort of guardrails for your future self. And the trick is, is that in the moment you're listening to this podcast and you're like, yes, I'm motivated. I'm excited. I'm going to get it. You know, I'm going to get in shape. It's like that January 1st, like, yay, it's your birthday. It's a new year. Great guess what? You're not always going to be motivated. You are not always going to want to work out. You are going to, your boss is going to yell at you. You're going to have a fight with your partner. You're going to, your kids are going to annoy you. And then you're going to want to say like, screw it. I'm going to have a bunch of junk food. But here's the thing. If you have a system that you don't have junk food in your house, you're probably not going to eat it because it's not going to be there. And you're going to be too lazy to go out to the store. So that's an example of a system. So having an appointment with a personal trainer, that's mm -hmm. another system. You just have to know yourself and you have to know that it's not a you problem, it's a human being problem. We are not always motivated. I'm not always mm -hmm. motivated, but I have enough habits in my life and mm -hmm. systems that I pretty much always make the right decision. And that's 20 years in the yeah. making for sure, but it's also that I really have a lot of guardrails set up. I love chocolate almonds. Do I have them in my house? No, not because I think chocolate almonds are bad, but because I know that 11 o'clock at night, I've had a long day, I'm gonna eat way too many of them. So if I wanna have some lovely chocolate, I will. I also love fudge bars. So I keep them at my mom's house. And if I want a fudge bar, I go over there, we sit, yeah. we chat and I have one, not right. seven, right? But if they're in my freezer, guess what? I'm going to eat the entire box. So I think the, the answer to your question is a combination of you got to know yourself and you got to know where your triggers, pitfalls, that stuff is. Because for some people, they could have fudge bars in their house and it wouldn't be a big deal. You know, maybe they just don't like that. But for other people, it would be like shortbread. Like my mom loves shortbread. So I could have shortbread in my house for years and I would never eat it. It would go stale. I hate it. But like my mom loves it. So for her, like it's partly knowing what you love and where you're more likely to fall off the wagon. Like, so for some people, they're really good at the fitness thing and they've dialed that in and they love their Peloton or they have a personal trainer or they have their friend who's waiting for them 6 a.m., you know, so they're not going to say like sleep in on their friend, right? So they have those down, but for them, maybe food is really a big thing. So then for them, maybe they really have to dial in on the systems of the food, or maybe they're really good at exercise and food, but they're not great at sleep. So then they need some systems for that. So I think it's really, it comes down to knowing yourself and then knowing that it is not about you being a weak or a bad person or a failure if you struggle, like struggle is just part of the game of this. So you have to know that that's part of being human. And then you have to set up systems that are going to, you know, help you um, right. survive. Minimize those and, challenges, minimize those struggles. Make yeah, it impossible. I really like the idea. Yeah, exactly. Make it impossible. I really like the work of Angela Duckworth, her right. book Grit. And that's one of the things she talks a lot about, that people with the most mm -hmm. discipline actually use the least of it, right? Because they just have their life set up that they don't have to use cognitive right. energy to keep them on track, that it's just they have, you know, their friend waiting for them, or they don't have the food in the house, or they have a food delivery service. So they've just, they've thought in advance when they have a lot of cognitive energy of like, okay, what am I going to need? What systems? They've set it up. Um, and then just sort of more naturally flows. Amazing. And I'm sure that you go into a lot more detail in this in Finding Your Fit or Your Fittest Future Self, your books on Amazon. I do. Yeah, that was a very seamless little transition from, from promoting. <laughs> Thank you. You should come and be on my PR team. I'm like, want to come work for me? Yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're, um, there's a lot of stuff on systems and you can go on my website, kathleentrotter.com and look up. I have lots of articles on like specific systems that you can have. And, but it really is so much of it is knowing yourself, like just even saying to yourself, okay, in the past, when have I been the most successful? And like, how can I replicate? Wait, those can I stop things, you for one right? second? Like if you've... 
Okay. Yeah. Because stop awareness me. is the foundation for being yes. able to do that. Right? Like we like yes, people can, awareness hear this you can't have yeah, people can hear this podcast. You can't have trust. Yeah, people can hear this podcast. They can listen to it, but a lot of people lack that self-awareness. So for me, what I do is I write down every single workout while I do it. I write down every single food I eat. I have a headache. I tend to get headaches yes. a lot. You know, I train a lot. I have a headache oh, journal. Right. And because I have a lot oh, of I love listen, you it. can't move forward in life if you have nothing to look back on. And a lot Absolutely. of information, a lot of data that. on when I feel my best, on when I'm performing my best and X, Y, Z. But I, I want to just kind of interject that because I talk about awareness a lot. Yeah, awareness is A lot of people huge. lack that awareness, yeah. but, but continue yeah. that thought. Yeah, for sure. Well, I don't know where my thought was, but what I would say is on the awareness thought, because I, I think awareness is huge. I would challenge people listening to say at the end of the day today, write down one to three habits that they did that they felt proud of that made them the sort of most favorite version of themselves. And then think about, okay, how can I replicate that tomorrow and the next day? Like what systems can I set up? Oh, I went for a walk at lunch. That's great. Oh, today it happened sort of fairly haphazardly because of, you know, a colleague said, do you want to go for a walk? So, okay, I know I like that. So like, can I email the, the colleague right now and say, do you want to walk Monday, Wednesday, right. Friday? It's like, what can, how can you replicate the good stuff? And then write down one to three things that you did that you're not necessarily that proud of and then be like, okay, how can I mitigate those damages in the future? So let's say, you know, you had a sugary snack. Okay. Well, maybe you didn't have enough protein at breakfast or maybe you didn't have right. enough sleep or maybe you didn't have enough water. So think about what were the situations, the environment that set those habits, those choices up. And then how do I change that in the future? So that's a really great way. Cause I think the problem is, is awareness is wonderful, but it's a really big mm -hmm. concept and people are like, well, but how do I become aware? Like, how do I do that? It feels very overwhelming. And, you know, I've had a therapist and she's helped me for years build my awareness muscle, but it really is a it muscle is. awareness. And like repetition. any muscle, like, you know, if you don't check, it's repetition. Yeah. So that, that's a really simple way if, if every night you think about that, if you love think that. about what are the things I want to replicate and one of the things I want to sort mm -hmm. of diminish. Um, I love that. It's huge. Sticking to one, Game stick to one thing. Keep it simple, stupid. What's yeah. your one thing that you want to yeah. kind of be aware totally. of? Totally. One thing yes. that's actually one of my hacks is I'm very big on mindfulness and awareness. Like really, really, that is probably my most important personal growth activity uh, that I'm being intentional about so each and every cool. single day. Yeah. It's not really my yes. physical fitness. It's definitely not my business. It's not, you know, my relationships. I just want to really increase the awareness of what's going on inside here. Cause I've been able, I've been I able to it. heal so many injuries by just consciously being yeah. aware. Where's the pain coming from? When do I feel the pain yeah. and being aware of the pain as soon as yeah. it arises so I can address it now yeah. and like lay off. Yeah. And so you don't add right. the sort of layer of suffering onto that, that, yeah. You and my therapist, I feel I like love that. really good friends. <laughs> These are all things so that she's what, trying to teach me. Uh, one mindfulness hack or awareness hack that I've done probably for about a year and a half, I don't do it anymore, but I would set alarms on my watch every hour and every mm. single hour okay. would go off. And I would ask myself mm -hmm. three questions and the, and this was like a year and a half ago. So I can't remember exactly what the questions were, but it was like, Am I doing what I want to be doing right now? Was I more disciplined yeah. than I was last hour? And how do I feel physically mm -hmm. and mentally? What are my thoughts? I you love know, it. Do I feel full? Am I yeah. getting hunger pains? Do I feel lethargic? Am I tired right now? Yeah. You know, am I focused on what I'm doing? Am I doing what I want to be doing? Am I working? Yes. I like working. I'm, I'm sure yeah. I'm a real estate agent I love too, working. so yeah, I'm yeah. showing nice houses during the day, having conversations with people. Yeah. So um, yeah. I think that's for all you listeners out there that are just trying to increase your awareness. I think that would be a great hack for you guys to incorporate right here, right now with what you got from where you're at. Set an alarm on your phone. Have it go off every hour, every yeah. two hours. And when it goes off, ask yourself some important questions. Were you more disciplined than you were last yeah. hour? Are you doing what you want to be doing? And how do you feel physically and mentally? Yeah. Yeah. So can Please. I tie that back to what we were talking about Please. earlier about systems? So I think this is a really great example. So somebody would come to me and they would say, oh my God, I want to be more aware. And they're really motivated in that moment. And I would say, great. I love that you're being, want to be more aware, but here's the thing you're going to get lost in your life. And this is not a you problem. This is just a person problem is that we only have so much cognitive space and you're going to get lost at work. You're going to, I call it tunneling into your, your work and you're, you're not going to tell yourself 
to stop and be aware. So what are you going to do? Yeah. Oh, you're going to set an alarm. An alarm Guaranteed. is a system that makes Guaranteed. sure you have a moment of awareness. And we need that for, ever, for everything. everything. Because honestly, like if people get one thing from this podcast, it's that motivation, it's akin to an emotion, right? It comes and it goes and you cannot say to yourself, I am going to be a hundred percent motivated not all the time. That's unrealistic not for anybody. It is not sustainable. And you also cannot say to yourself, well, I'm just going to be no. aware. Like the, the amount of people that I say, okay, well, how are you going to get fit? Well, I'm just going to do it. Gotta be it just specific. doesn't work that way. You have to plan, you have to be specific and you have to create these guardrails. So I love the story of um, the Greek myth of Odysseus, right? So the idea is that he, there were these sirens and these sirens always called to the sailors and brought them um, into the island where they were or the land. And um, Odysseus was, every sailor before Odysseus was like, well, they're just not going to get me. I'm just not going to do it. Right. It's, it's kind of like, well, I'm just not going to eat the junk food that's in my house or I'm just going to be motivated to be aware. And then they'd be going past the sirens and the sirens would call and they, they would go. They couldn't not. And so Odysseus, what he did was he said, okay, I know they're going to call to me. I know I'm not going to have the ability to re resist them. So I'm going to tie myself up. And so he mm. tied himself to the boat and all of his sailors. So he literally Impossible. could not right. be called, right? And that's what you did with the alarm. You said, yeah, it'd be great if I would just naturally was aware and ask myself those questions. And it might haphazardly, you know, catch if catch can happen once or twice a day. But if I want it to happen 12 times a day or eight times a day or six times a day or however many times you want to do it, I have to set up a system. Um, and I think that people have this idea that if I set up systems, it like makes me less of a human. Like I'm not as strong. I'm not as, you know, so it feels like it makes them less than, but I really want to drill home that idea that Angela Duckworth was saying that people who are disciplined actually use less discipline, right? So stop thinking that you just have to quote unquote do it and it should happen. It should naturally, I should just be more aware and be more fit. It doesn't work that way. Once you have the habit set up, yes, your life sort of pulls you along. Um, I don't have to think about it as much because of my habits mm -hmm. that I've had for the last 20 years. But to create the habit create, requires intentionality. It requires you to be like, okay, what are my systems? What do I want to achieve? Yep. I and love what that. are my systems? And, uh, you know, all it took was one time of me setting my alarms. It, what, literally, all yeah. I did, I took 25 seconds out of my day one time, set my alarms, never got to do it ever yeah. again. Right? It's, yeah. And isn't that so much better than getting to the end of the day and being like, 100%. screw it, I didn't do the awareness moment. Like I wanted to. And then the problem is, is you don't set up the systems. So you don't do what you want to do. And then you just yeah. feel really frustrated and angry at yourself. And then you beat yourself up when it was a simple right. solution. Set the alarm. Setting these, setting the these systems. systems up. I love, I love how this conversation really is hammering the systems because it's smart, it's efficient, and it's effortless. Yeah. Right? And it's easy. Hey, it's, it's effortless. effortless. It's, it's so easy. easy, but it's so right. useful. Um, and again, like I know I've said this before, but I just want to say it again. I think people don't do it because one, they think it's like would not need it. Like, oh, well, I'm motivated now, but that's what's called present bias. So our brain has this cognitive distortion that it's like, however I feel in this moment, I'm always going to feel that way. It's an unconscious thing that we do. So if you feel motivated, listen to this podcast, you're like, I don't need the systems. What is Kathleen? She's crazy. I'm going to, I'm so motivated. I'm going to work out every day this week. But of course you feel that way because you you're excited about listening to the podcast, but tomorrow when you're having a fight with your kid or you're exhausted or you haven't slept or whatever, mm -hmm. you're not going to be as motivated. So that's where you, you need the systems right. for your lesser self, not mm. for your greater self. And that's the problem is we set our goals when we're in our like lofty, greater motivated self, but most of the time we're in our lesser selves and yep. that's when we need the that. system. All right, Kathleen, do you feel comfortable sharing with us some of your personal goals? Oh, I like this. Well, I do. And it's an interesting thing right now that I'm sort of struggling with. So I don't know if it's a goal so much. Well, I guess it's a goal. So I am very, if you go back to knowing ourselves, I'm a very like doer and I like to be very busy and I love my job. And, you know, those things serve me until they don't serve me. And my partner, his name is James. He said to me a couple of days ago, you know, this pandemic, we are not making memories anymore. Like we work and you know we're, we're very happy don't get me wrong but like we're i'm in canada we're i think we are still slightly behind the like let's get over covid thing that you know so we're still pretty cautious we've just you know we just lost the mask mandate a couple months ago um and and 
he just sort of said like, we have to find ways to, yeah, be safe because a lot of my clients are older and have a lot of health issues. So I still do want to be safe, but he's like, we have to find a way to reintegrate into life um, and make memories because what the hell's the point of living if you're not making memories? So I think my current goal, like literally it would probably be very different if you talked to me even in 48 hours, but this is just really on my mind. My current goal is to find a way to be to live in my integrity, which is to keep everyone in my life safe, um, but also to not live with regrets. And I don't want to get past another five years of, you know, COVID and sort of be like, well, I've just lost, you know, eight years of my life. And that, yeah. that was what his point was, you know, like we have to have memories and, and, you know, we could be hit by right. a bus tomorrow and and then what, like, so it's finding that balance, but I think it kind of ties really nicely back to our conversation on knowing yourself and systems because it'd be very easy for me to say to James, yeah, yeah, we'll do it. Of course we'll add in more vacation, but that's not having a system. That's just hoping that it's going to happen and hope is not viable. So we have a date actually tonight to sit down and look at our calendars and book some small and larger, some small date nights and some trips. I think we're going to go to Whistler in December and um, book it. And, but it's, it's a similar thing, whether you're trying to fit in fitness or you're trying to fit in a more balanced life, which is what I need post COVID. You have to know yourself and you know that I, I bias towards wanting to work too much because I love my job. Um, and you have to know yourself and then you have to take the yeah. time to create the systems because honestly, I could say to James, you know, 500 million times. Oh yeah, for sure. We're going to have a more fun life for sure. I want that balance. But if we do not take the time to create a schedule and in advance plan. Amazing. It's never so gonna what's happen. your, do you have any specific goals or daily slash weekly non-negotiables? So my, yeah. That help you get better. I think better. my specific goal is right now, my first uh -huh. goal, we talk about first steps. Literally the first step okay. is sitting down with him tonight and figuring out what it means for him to have a more fun life and to create memories. Because listen, for him, that could mean right. skydiving. I have no idea. Like he just said, I want more memories. So first, like, and again, I want to tie this back to fitness. It really relates to that, right? If somebody said to me, oh, I want to become more fit. I'm like, okay, but what does that mean to you? Like, does fit mean hanging out and being able to play with your grandkids on the floor? Or does fit mean like doing an Ironman? Like fit looks very different on different people. So before I help anyone create a plan, I make them define yeah. what fitness is. And so that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to sit down and we're going to say like, okay, well, what does making memories mean to you, to James and to Kathleen? And how can we blend that together? And then once we have an idea of what our, fitness is right what our memory creation is then we will be able to create the smaller like both long-term and short-term goals so maybe it's like one date night a week one weekend away every five weeks and one bigger vacation every six months i don't know yet i would be able to tell you next podcast okay but i do but but the definition of something is very important because you know like some people want to run and some people want to join crossfit and some people want to get really strong and some people want to get power uh, some people want hypertrophy like whatever it is and they're very different they're different goals and they take different steps you know so i mean and some couples maybe making memories means like moving to I don't know, like Hawaii for a month. I have no idea. Right. So you kind of have to define these things. hundred percent. Yeah. Some of my, uh, short-term goals, I want, I'm really working on reducing input of music, input of social media, input. Oh, of that's news. a good goal. Yeah. Um, I'm really trying to work from a space of stillness, silence, yeah. solitude. Yeah. I listened to a podcast. I think was it somebody, she was like, not hurry up and do less, but it was you, you interviewed somebody who was talking about mm -hmm. the power of sort of stillness. Yeah. I, yeah, I was listening to that this morning. It was a good interview. Yeah. Cause I was like, Oh yeah, I could use that too. Uh, we could all use so some like, stillness. Right. For yeah. sure. I mean, I meditate 20 minutes every morning and I usually drop yeah. into like a 10, 15 minute meditation in the afternoon, but trying to work from that space, work yeah. from that conscious level of no exterior, uh, things that get my mind going, whether it's like a song in yeah. my head or watching yeah. what's on the news or checking the stock market. But Kathleen, this was a, this was an amazing conversation to all the people. Yeah, it was really fun. Yeah, it was great. This was, this was amazing. I'm so happy that uh, we have so much in common. This is super on yeah. brand for me and for my listeners. So all the people that are listening on Spotify, Audible, Apple Podcasts, uh, thank you so much. If you're watching on YouTube and you stuck around until now, I'm going to drop the link below to Kathleen's website. If you're listening 
The website is kathleentrotter.com, K-A-T-H-L-E-E-N-T-R-O-T-T-E-R.com. You can also check her out on Amazon, her two books, Finding Your Fit and Your Fittest Future Self. Um, Kathleen, it was an absolute pleasure getting to know you, learning more about you. I love your energy. You're just like, yeah, it's fantastic. Amazing. Well, enjoy the rest of your day. Continue uh, being the best version of yourself. Be consistent. My favorite version. I like my oh, favorite okay. version of myself right now. I like right that. Now. I like that actually best too. Best is like, yeah, because best is a complicated thing. Like, and best changes, and and I don't know. It feels a little bit judgy in a way. Like, I don't know. I really like my favorite because favorite comes from like me and is very intrinsic, and I'm very much about that. Like, getting rid of the shoulds and the comparison to other people, and just be like, what? How do I want to be? And what jives with my integrity and my goals and and my values? And I don't know. So my favorite version of Kathleen is sort of is where I'm at right now. Amazing, great. Well, enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, have an amazing time planning out your future. My vacation, plans, I know. The memories and experiences that you're going to create. And uh, we'll definitely connect again soon. Perfect. What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for being a loyal listener of the podcast. If you haven't already gotten my first book, Live Better Now, it's officially out on Amazon.com. I want to give a huge thank you to everyone that's already purchased the book, reviewed the book, or shared it with friends and family. It really, really means a lot to me. Thank you guys so much. Go ahead and visit amazon.com and purchase Live Better Now.